Welcome to Around the Reel with your hosts Aaron Carlson and Charles Lawson. Gucci gang, Gucci gang. The coffee is delicious, and I want to thank our barista, Chuck Lawson, for getting our coffee. Do we call him a barista or bartender? I don't, well, for her, a, barista, for you oh, guys, bartender. Okay. He's multi. He's always As, been multi talented. <laughs> he's multi talented. He he's bi talented. That's true. I do not gender specific when it comes to my talents of catering to others. Hmm. That's very true. Well, he put fucking rum in this this time, so like a lot of it. It's good. That's where all the rum went. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Welcome to Around the Reel. Welcome to Around the Reel, everybody. Yay! Uh, we've got a full house today. Yes. We've got uh, myself, Charles Lawson, Samantha Hanna, and our guest, our very first guest on the podcast, Ginger Bailey. So happy to be here. Super excited. Thank you for coming, Ginger. You're welcome. That's right. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> so guys, we've been doing uh, this podcast for about a month now, and um, we're very happy with the progress we're making, and things are coming around really well. And we've got a, a lot of you guys out there listening, which we all want to say thank you. Um, it's it's super exciting to have people listening to us yes. on these uh, silly ass podcasts we're doing. But at the same time, we awesome. hope we're getting something out of it. So yeah, absolutely, it's good stuff. It's Sam. You want yes. to you wanted to play a game? Ooh. Oh, I don't want to play that game. Shall Why not? we play a game? Do you want me to start? You want to start it this time? Yeah. Okay, you do it. Go for it. One fart smeller. He smelt farts. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Oh. Just fucked Not even gonna up. try. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh my oh God. dear heaven. Okay, Ginger. I mean, so the, the okay. game is <laughs> smart fella. I don't know if you've ever played it before. Someone is really drinking and gulping good. Oh, that was me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, right. it's, a, it's a good drink. It's yeah, it's a, a good, good drink. It's some good coffee. So, Ginger, what what we try to do is break the ice, get the tongue going. Okay. Get that kind of thing. So, we always try to do. One smart fella. Go something like this. One smart fella, he felt smart. Two smart fellas, they felt smart. Three smart fellas, they all felt smart. You want to say that as quickly as you can. You have the floor. Oh, gosh. Okay. One smart fella, he felt smart. Two smart fellas, they felt smart. Three smart fellas... They all felt smart. It was almost she there. Was, she, she caught it. I do it faster. One smart fella, he felt smart. Two smart fellas, they felt smart. Three smart fellas, they all felt smart. One smart fella, he smelt, felt smart. Ah. Two smart <laughs> fellas. <laughs> oh, what, did I, wait, what's the point? <laughs> did I say fart? Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. That's funny. I always say fart. Yeah, I bet that's, I, yeah, it's funny. Very good job. Thank you. Very good job. <laughs> I loosened my time. There you go. That's all it's about. Chuck, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing very well on this beautiful Saturday morning. I got my friends over here to hang out and talk to me. So, yay. Oh, yeah. Yay. You're not alone. Isn't that nice? Paid us a lot of money to be here. <laughs> I'm joking. Actually, it was just an IOU, so uh, That's those right. checks will be Life. going in the mail three years from never. <laughs> Firstborn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can fucking take her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was talking about mine. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, the, she was gonna oh, pay you with her. I was gonna pay you with mine. That's a oh. that's a decent deal. That's a good kid. <laughs> wait, I'm thinking of everybody's firstborns. They're all like bad pancakes. No, thank you. Well, no, oh, it's not mine. Is that that They're philosophy? Like pancakes. That, is that burning the first one? Is that yeah, what you're saying? You always Oops. burn the first one. Yeah, just toss it in the garbage and keep going. Just burn oh. the shit out of it. You can't even put any syrup on it or nothing to fix it. It's just I don't think fucked. that's right in Ginger's case. She got a she. She actually did good with her first pancake. Yeah, you had a good batch of pancakes. That, you know what? God give him pancake because I didn't make, I didn't, I don't take, that's God. That's a miracle. That's why miracles can happen. <laughs> you did good. I don't know how you did it. Yeah. I, would you, I like did you have a recipe? Did you follow the recipe? No. Because they didn't give me shit when I made mine. I know. I just gave you the ingredients. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't get a cookbook. I didn't get a manual. No. I didn't get nothing. No, no. My no, utensils are all old. Shit, oh. you know, you're supposed to have one of those blending things. I didn't have that. I used a fork, just stirred that shit up, scraping Classic the bottom. Fork. Yeah, all bad. <laughs> shit broke. God all came up it. to me and tapped me on the shoulder. He said, "You know what you did? <laughs> Here's what you get." No, <laughs> not true. Oh, not fuck. true. <laughs> I, I right. sort of identify with that, Chuck. <laughs> Anybody got anything in their head before we get started in the show? Oh, I have a lot of stuff in my head. Yeah, like a like the earworm thing because I got one. Oh God, what is it? 
My girl wants to party all the time. Oh party God, all the time. Party all, all the time. time. Oh, What's it. bad is I have my a girl video wants of him. To party is. all the time. Party, is he party all the time. Barely. He is twerking. She party all, all the time. time. Mm-hmm. Twerking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm
sexually abused. I mm-hmm. mean, sometimes it has to be shocking. Right. And then to put yourself in that, what if you were, and actually open that door. I mean, it's it could be painful or it could be happy. I mean, so it, it's it's one after the other to keep digging, I think. Right. Just keep digging. Got it. Someone must be home. Oh, the dog. There's the dog. Hey, the dog, is, the dog hasn't been gone for a couple of weeks. but she, they dog. Have, but it's been quiet. So now that uh, people are coming around, the dog is a little more active. Sorry. The dog and always sorry, wants to be on the fucking show. Sorry, not sorry. You know, it's just we, we're living life for real. So here's what we're doing. Did you get the dog an NDA? What? No. Hmm. You didn't put any paperwork in for the fucking Got dog? They're wagging its mouth. And- no. Fucking dog. Did you say wagging its mouth? <sighs> anyway, That's interesting. Well, <laughs> no, it's, 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 what you're talking about, I totally relate with. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, which way a story unfolds, but the characters make that story really flush it flushes everything out mm-hmm. right so that's that's vital when you're doing stuff and i guess the inspiration that you get from life experiences like sam was saying or people that you've met or know is kind of where i was getting at with mm-hmm. this whole thing and chuck i know when you wrote say goodbye it was kind right. of the same thing right oh absolutely i mean a lot of say goodbye is the characteristics inside the story are people who have been impacted in my life and it's, and many of them are actually in the story with us but like you know um one of the characters is based off of you know your brother marcus mm-hmm. from when he was younger working with me and the different kinds of things that we went through and just you know working and watching mm, him grow that. up and becoming uh, i didn't actually re- that's okay story time story time so story time i, I didn't realize that, i didn't realize that either until marcus pointed out the fact he was like, you know, I work as hard as I do because of the things you taught me. Hmm. I, you know, I don't, I don't stop until the job's done and I don't make sure the job's done right every time because that's how you taught me. And I'm like, I taught you that. Oh. No, that's oh, true. That's, well, that's, that's, I mean, that's no, and that's like with my brother, that's, that's true because he, he only had myself as a father figure most of his life. So right. when you came around, right. you, you brought things that I didn't like, I don't fucking want to work like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to carry a fucking tree on my back and, and, and start building a house with toothpicks. I'm not going to do that. I'm not that guy. Right. But you are, you right. know, and that's good that you instilled that in because look how good he's doing now. And he was able to you relate know? to But that. he needed right. that. So yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. See, there's a story right there, right? And then, and then also, and I mean, everything else within that story, the characters even in that story, I mean, like, you know, the, there's characteristics from each of my kids in every person who's outlying within the story so like you know the matt character can be also go back to marcus and the changes that he went through and the troubles that he had Mm -hmm. for the style that he was because he was that angry person all the time and then also same like for abigail the sister character you know my daughters you can see my daughters in those characters the same as the daughter in the story you know you see my daughters in her also so it's like depending on how you look at it people that you interact with every day can definitely are the stories that make up your lives. And going off of what you said, I could never imagine what a woman goes through if she is assaulted. Right. However, as a guy who has a temper, I can definitely come up with a way to hurt that person in a story right. of who has caused that pain to somebody else. And right. I have written those stories in my head a lot. I want to say something yeah. really quick before I sure. lose this thought uh, point. Sorry. One of the things I was saying is that it's an interesting that sometimes the story or the characters that you create can actually turn around after they're created and tell you something about yourself that you weren't even aware of when you were creating that. No, that's, no, that's the true. <clears throat> you know, so that that that's it's it goes farther than our our conscious mind. It touches into something deeper, and then that's where it gets pretty crazy. Right. right. right? After we made the con, yeah. Aaron came back to me and said, "I just realized that each character in the con is a piece of me, or a part of me," and I was like, "Whoa, that's." That's I had right. no idea. I had no idea when I was. He writing. didn't know. No, yeah. but when I watched that final film, and was paying attention when we went to the theater showing mm-hmm. the first time, yeah, I could see me in every character. I didn't care if it was the good guy or one of the bad guys or one of the crazy ones or one of the funny ones. It didn't no, matter. Aaron, it was, I, it was I saw me. it too. Yeah, it was me. Every it was one crazy. Of them. Yeah, I was like, wow, he did it. This is like yeah. crazy. And I was also impressed with how you've been digging deeper into yourself, going behind those whatever locked up things that you didn't oh, yeah. want to face before. That's where I, I like where, okay. So like, for example, character writing is important and you, you get inspired by different things as a writer, mm-hmm. right? It could be a moment. It could be something you see. Mm-hmm. It could be something somebody said. Right. It could be just a thought you had or right. an image in your head. It doesn't, it, you know, I don't know where my stories start either, but right. trying to find the characters involved in them, is what is the fun part, yeah. you know, to me, because it flushes out a story most of the time, right? So when I wrote The Outrider, it was kind of that way. I've had that image in my head of uh, a, a figure. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was floating in the air, 
you know, and it looked like a cape in my head, but mm -hmm. you know, when you watch the outright and you see it's Marcus Ford's coat right. floating, but it was, I saw the moon. I saw all that. I had no idea that awesome. was in my mind for like 15 years. Right. I had no idea what it was, mm -hmm. you know, but it was a thought I had. So trying to get to that point in that story to have that vision come to life. I created Marcus Ford. Marcus Ford was a character that I thought about the anti-hero part. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing I want to talk about, like heroes and villains. I think that's vital. How do we dictate who the hero and villain is in the story? But, you know, in my mind, my favorite heroes have always been the anti-heroes. Mm -hmm. the, the regular man or woman who has just enough bad qualities that they could be considered a bad guy. Right. But do enough good things for you to forget about it because that's a complicated character right and i think that's those flaws that people have too i mean we yeah. all have these evil thoughts we all have do these things and we all try to find a way to justify them whether in the right way or wrong way or suppress we them one way or another it. one way or another right? Brains, right so in in a way we all that try to be a better person to me are anti-heroes. I mean, we all kind of are, you know, we, we don't want to be heroic, but at the same time, we don't want to be bad you people. You feel like right? there's less hypocrisy with an anti-hero. Correct. I do. I do. And acknowledging that is good. And that's why like Marcus Ford was very intriguing to me because he knew he was a piece of shit. Right. You know, he knew he did a lot of bad things, but he also didn't like that he did those things. Right. right. He didn't necessarily want to be a hero, but for some reason he had to be. Right. That's fun. His conscience yeah. is, was thorn in his siding. Him. Absolutely. Yeah. Those kind of characters. I mean, you go back and watch Scarface. All right. And there's a reason why Tony Montana is so likable. All right. He did a lot of bad shit. He's a bad guy. I mean, he killed people. He was a drug dealer. You know, he could give a shit about people in general, except his sister, you know, his family, his friends and little kids. You ain't going right. to hurt a fucking little kid, right? right? And for some reason, those little qualities that he had made you adore this guy. Like, when you watch Scarface, you want to almost cry when he dies. You don't want him to die. But he's you done enough bad him. shit, right? Right. It's a brilliant character. But he deserves it. Brilliant. He, <laughs> I mean, he had it coming. Honestly, he had it coming. He, he lived coming. by the sword and he died by the sword. And I do like that there's no happy ending there, even right. though I don't like that. Right. It just, but it feels... It sticks with you longer. It's Absolutely. It's definitely moving. I mean, I don't like that movie. I watched it. I, d I could not forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's burned into my mind. And oh, yeah. it is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I love to not like it, you know? Right. But I feel something. I fucking love that movie. And that's a character. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's one of those movies, too, and talking about characters and all that kind of stuff, is depending on your mood, Scarface is one of those movies that if you are in a good mood, then it's funny. If you are right. in you know, a sad mood, then you can actually you see more of how troubled and torn right. this character is right mm -hmm. right so yeah, and, he, just... and he's a victim too i mean it's just when it's layered and layered and mm -hmm. layered mm -hmm. like exactly. life and like i saw onions right we're onions so that stuff is is really good but let's talk about heroes and villains then since we're getting into that so what defines a hero right and what defines a villain because right now in our world we have a, a person that a majority of the people I don't give a shit what anybody says. A majority of the people in this country find Trump as a villain. Right. Right. But there are a group of people that believe he is a hero. Right. How do you define universally what a hero is? Can it be done? No. Uh-uh. Sam, what do you think? Jesus, well, that's it's, the only definition It's I can done, think. I think, on a personal basis. Like, depending on each person. I mean, everyone's different. So it's it's what do you value the most? Or what do you think is a heroic characteristic of somebody it's it's different for everybody i think but there's universal things that i'm thinking like right. for example you look at your captain america poster the over greater there, right good. that imagery right, right there alone will probably get a majority of who americans okay. to be like that's a great hero right that's a genuine hero but why because there's an american flag there right See, because he's but, doing I think good he's a villain <laughs> <laughs> yeah because he's he's all about america so that's my villain America. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I think that people universally want to believe that someone's going to protect the weaker, like the stronger is going to protect the weaker and people things are going to be fair. I mean, is that is that like a hero's supposed to be doing that? I don't know. Well, but then that's it just gets twisted. Well, it's a hero's journey. Right, right, exactly. And yeah. that's one of the things they say too. I mean, even you know, pointing out Captain America and talking about the Marvel movies, it's like, you know, which version of right is right? I mean, it's the you know, a hero is somebody who always does the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well according to who what is though, right is still compass. independent thought. Right. So what is right to one person might not be the exact same right to the others, and then next thing you know, you have turmoil. Mm -hmm. Well, and then you have to consider what's all being portrayed about this person too. Like there's 
there's always more to the story or there's more about this person's characteristics that maybe the more you find out, the less of a hero or the less of a villain they become to you. Possibly, yeah. I think yeah. I think a hero has to be someone who does not put himself first. There you go. I mean, I think a hero has to be someone who 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 doesn't think of themselves. That's the right. only way it works. And because people need a leader. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they'll do what's good in their own eyes. So if that's the case, <laughs> then why do people find Trump a hero? That's the fucking part I can't figure the fuck I out. The dogs don't like Trump I either. Don't yeah, know. They don't. They're just on one today. Chuck, if you need to take a break and get the dogs, that'd be fine. No, I don't need to take a break. You, you can probably do it. I don't no, think anybody okay. wants to hear dogs. It's fine. Yeah, we can be a professional comic cast with dogs in the background. It's fine. That's what you said you wanted. He's telling yeah. you to go put the dogs outside. <laughs> I'm just Not, messing No passive One of them is outside. At all, at all here. Well, one of <laughs> them is this. inside barking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the part, though, man, that is. It throws me for a loop. You're right. I think a hero is selfless, mm -hmm. you know, where they're willing to, like that little kid that we've seen in the news this last week where he jumped in front of that fucking dog to save his little sister and got yeah. like 90 stitches in his face. And even Captain yeah, America, Chris Evans, and, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. hit that kid up and we're like, dude, you're a hero, you know, and that kid lit up. You know, There's he no took greater one for love than that to right. give your own life right. for you. And the little man, little brother. man said that he, 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 if anybody was going to die, it should be me. Yeah. Dude. Okay. Yeah. Do you think Trump would say some shit like that? That was a, what, an eight-year-old boy? Right. Bruh. <laughs> no, Trump See, would use somebody for a human shield. You know what I'm saying? And run. run. He put his little, he put fucking his bear and his son in front of him to not take, you know, yeah, take the bullet. I mean, I it's that. pretty clear. That he is no fucking hero. But see, that's what's curious about it. Why do people find him to be heroic? What's he standing up for that I'm missing? I don't even know if I've, I've ever heard me say that he's heroic. I just hear that they just follow and agree with his politics. I thought it was because they hated the He was draining the swamp. More. He's draining the swamp. It's a little of all of it. All of it. I think so. What the fuck does that mean, by the way? <laughs> Well, I think that's what we're all, uh, as a nation, becoming more aware of. I mean, people are becoming aware of things that they were never aware of before, including myself, mm -hmm. and seeing things in a different light, prismatic, layered. It's right. an, And for, to be a mixed person in this world, and I've grown up in a white environment most of my life. When I say that, I'm, you know, air quoting, this is how I'm describing it, but it's like, um, no one ever was really racist towards me, I thought, but even... It's just that implied or, you know, you're not as black as, you know, you're, I didn't even know you were black. I thought you were Mexican, you know, because right. I, I've there's gotten that. not different skin color, mm -hmm. you know, my hair texture, whatever. But I also got that from when I wanted to go and be with my black side and then people didn't like me because of that as well. Right. So, and that's also part of the racism where people are systematically thinking that lighter is better. And now the darker is not liking me because I'm lighter and I'm just like, what is happening? Yeah. Where do I fit in? Where do I fit in? But at the same time, I didn't have to ever fit in. So that was great for me. I never checked the one box back when you had to check one box, black or white. You did are both? Are you a drop? I checked other and I wrote in mulatto because right. that was the word. That, that was I, the word back then. That was the word. Yeah. Was this is what it. I am, and it matters. I was gonna yeah. own mulatto. Now I'm just like, is think, that word even cool? I don't even I know what the weird. fuck I am. Though. I think that question just needs to go off of everything. <laughs> just like, like, why that do needs we have to? Not to matter. And then there's all these different subsections, and I'm just like, why? Maybe if right. I understood why, but whatever. There is no reason. That's why that question needs to go. It's not important. And somebody was <laughs> sawing something, but no. So I, I, those Leave are the doors things. open. Leave those the are windows open. It'll well, be we fine. Needed air. They said. Hey, it's okay. We're just yeah, we were to go. Yeah. Apologize so people. I'm so I'm aware of that now, and now we can we can start to evolve it. I guess awareness is seventy five percent. Yeah, <laughs> of the battle, but I don't know, Aaron. It's it's rough. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I, I had the same life growing up as you yeah, did in a way. I mean, I grew up in a predominantly white yep. area of yep. town. But I did get to go to the other side of town right. most of the time. And I remember being a little kid when I was uh, from head start until like third grade. Yeah. I went to a pretty mixed school where there was, you know, black, white, you know, Cambodians. Yeah. It didn't right. matter. Right. There, were, there was just, the it was just rainbow. mixed. Yeah. You know, and we all, we all never talked and said anything. We were just kids playing. Yeah. Fourth grade, I got pulled out of that school because we moved a little bit. And well, no, they actually changed the school border lines. Gotcha. So then I had to go to a school down there in more of a rural setting. Right. Right. And I was the only black kid in the entire school in elementary school in fourth grade. Right. I cried every day. Wow. I never felt so um, alone. In a way, oh, but I didn't man. know why. I felt didn't like, God, you know, I used to play tag and we'd wrestle at recess and play football right. and tackle each other and but the kids, you know, run around. But the kids, they were around. mean to you, were they? 
Well, no, no, but they were just distant. Well, go, yeah, well, they were distant, but I could have been just a new well, kid, right? Should, right, they, right. I mean, they were. They, no one treated me badly. But then I'd go out on recess and I'd look around, and instead of them, you know, when we're playing football and stuff like that, and and playing, playing what I right. thought it was. I mean, I was watching kids play fucking Foursquare, Tetherball. Right, right. I know. I mean, that was at my other school, but I looked, and no one ever touched that shit. Oh, I liked Tetherball. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I go to this white school, and right. these guys are playing it like they're, you know, Napoleon Dynamite, yeah. and I'm just like. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I was so yeah. alone and I had no idea. And it took a while. Uh, and I faked I was sick like all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I had stomach aches all the time because I was crying because I wanted him to think I was in pain, not crying because I was right. being a pussy. Not, not showing right. emotion. Right, right. So my mom finally picked me up. And my mom was white. Right, you know, right. And she got me from school one day and she asked me, she's like, boy, do you really have stomach aches? Because I have to take you to the doctor if you're having these all the time. And I, I told her truth. I was like, no, I just scared that school. You know what she did? She beat my ass for lying. Yeah. And that was okay. Because, and I was like, well, that sucked. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just go to school now. And then all of a sudden, guess what happened? Michael Jackson came out. Yeah. Thriller. Yeah. And all those white kids curl. thought I was fucking and the shit. And you got a Jerry Curl. And I you did. got that jacket. Because I played it. you were so pompous. I played I the role. Could, I was just talking That's to Ricky about this. That's where it came this. from. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he was, we were at the arcade. He pretended he didn't know me because all these little white girls <laughs> oh, were I hanging around. It. I was like, boy, I don't mm-hmm. even care. But I get it because you, you found your niche and you got in. That's right. The thing is, too, I went to different schools. My mom and I moved w- once a year before I went to Gig Arbor um, when I was in middle school. So I would just do this though because i was me i would mm-hmm. introduce my we always lived in the up, upper middle class uh but we lived in an apartment you know whatever in a nice complex mm-hmm. so but it was always predominantly white in the school i'm pretty sure i was the only girl of color if i'm being honest we lived in mukultia we lived in everett um des moines but um not when, in des moines but i would just say hi i'm ginger one time i had an english accent when i started school i mean i just was like hello i'm from manchester i don't know where i was getting this but i again character you developing. Played the role. i played right. the role i right. went up to people as a new kid and shook their hand and introduced myself yeah. and pretty soon I was running the school, mm-hmm. but I recently realized that I I didn't connect with anybody. I didn't either. I was just ha- playing a role. Me too. I wasn't being real. And the sad part is that follows you into your adult life and you start right. to go, who am I? Right. <laughs> am that's I a person or a character? Right. And so that's, yeah. Anyway. Same kind of thing happened to me. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it, that's what it feels like to be black guys. So how I'm, do you like that? I'm mixed, just, mixed. I'm just, I'm just grateful that in middle school when I met Ginger and she got rid of the accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By that time I'd gotten rid of it, but it just gradually wore off. But I mean, I didn't never saw you as being putting on a show. I mean, she was just you know, forgive me for having a moment. She was just the cute girl that lived up the other road, and we shared a bus stop. Right, but you know what's Aww. funny? You well, know what's yeah. funny is that we didn't know we were putting on a show no, either. We didn't. That's the weird thing, yeah. you know. And we've never talked about this. No, right? No, this is just I know where she's coming from because I had no idea either Mm-mm. at all. I just rolled with it. That's why we look know? back with the awareness and go. It was part of the. I'm not blaming anything, but it, right. it kind of was. Because I remember he got the Jerry Curl. It was the Afro before that. And then the Jerry Curl come out and it, he looked exactly. Well, and he got the jacket. I and... got the jacket. I even had, I mean, fucking my mom made a glove. Jeez, and Crow, you yeah. had the glove. I had the glove, You too. were the coolest. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. And I, shit worked, I, bro. But I, it did that's, work. That's cover it art really right there. Work. That's what I did. I sold that shit. You and yeah. Michael Jackson now? Well, yeah. it didn't work out very well for Michael. Really. No, but you know, I also you were Michael Jackson, and I was making Freddy Krueger's glove. Yeah, that and was my different. mom told me to stop. Yeah, you could you could be like have fun. <laughs> I had to fucking I guess figure out a way to survive. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. well, I mean, I am not. I have not dealt with anything that you two have. However, I've always been the bigger person in a group and everything else. So, like you know, one of my th- one of the doctors have told me one of the th- reasons I have a back issue is because I spent half my life slumping. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. nothing in comparison to what you guys are saying. The problem is, is yeah, you realize after time, you you do things to alter yourself to fit into yeah. different things. Sure, but you f- well, why'd you, you slump? fucking shouldn't have to? Because you didn't want to look so tall and big, or yeah, I mean, oh, you I, wanted. To... I kind of tower over everybody. So all you the time. you've had the a, only uh, time so I you always shrunk yourself down to fit in. The Got only time it. I was ever proud to be bigger than everybody is when we were walking down the streets because I would always walk behind everybody. I got gotcha. and stand tall. And then, like, you know, push people, you know, depending on what we were doing. If anybody was being stupid, push people off the side, you know, back right. onto the sidewalk before they walked off in the, into a freaking car. So, question. Is, is this is just dawning on me. Is part of the whole systemic thing is just that we, non-conformity was pushed down for so long? Like, uh, you know, I mean, if everyone didn't look the same, do the same things. I don't know. Well, I just, I didn't even know that, you know, 
mixed couples couldn't even get married in like 1968. No, I had no idea. I mean, I was that. born five years after that, right? That, that was the biggest thing. That's with the fucking Jeffersons. crazy to that's me, crazy. right? 1968. Yeah. That's not that long ago. Yeah, yeah. That goes, that's nuts. That means that people are out there going, oh, no, you can't get married. He's black. You're white. That's not going to work here. There's, legally, that's not going to happen. Legally, that's not going to And you had to walk out like, fuck, I can't get married to somebody I love and just my, because he's starting. And then you look at me like, hey, thanks for being black. Yeah. You screwed crazy. that up. And we we are, I guess, in some of those young, I mean, okay, a couple of different instances. I grew up Church of Christ. I love the Lord. And my grandfather was a preacher. But I did, and my mom went to Christian college, met my dad at Christian college. Mm-hmm. My dad and Uncle Greg were the two black people, only black people in this Christian college. And um, my dad never even played basketball. He was the star of the basketball team. He was a baseball player back in Berkeley. Right. <laughs> you chose one sport in those big high schools. But they, my mom would get death threat type of letters in her career. You know, mailbox, like, why are you with this black man? And they didn't, they didn't say, say it like, it like that. that, right. Uh, and then even sh- she, you know, had to get up in front of the church and ask forgiveness. My grandfather, come to find out, was radical that he didn't care that my wow. my dad was black. And wow. he was a Church of Christ. He, he preached grace, you know. So, again, I didn't realize that my mom, you know, my mom and dad stood up for stuff. Right. You know, and... They were in Portland. I mean, a progressive time at the time, right, right, but right, yeah, right. It, you know. So it's I mean, crazy, everyone right? has a story, I guess. Right. No, and, and and Sam and I were talking about this the other day about like grandparents in general, like, yeah. um, you know, like my grandpa and my grandma on my mom's side um, didn't have anything to do with my dad, and my mom being here. They did not want that. Wow. Until I was born, mm. and they came around for the most part, right? You know, my grandpa was a cool dude. He right. for some reason just took me right in. And oh, that all kind of went away. Right. Grandma had some hidden stuff in there, though, mm-hmm. and it came out when she was drunk. Gotcha. Okay. But normally, grandma was just as cool to me. So it always shocked me when I would be called, you know, that N-word by right. my grandma when I'd go over there. Like, what the fuck is she calling me? I had no idea, you know. Well, was she it, from the South at all? or? Uh, where did she come from? No, it was, well, Midwest somewhere. Gotcha. You know, so, I mean, that was probably instilled in her, too. But, I mean, that's family. I know. You know? And then you're like, tough. what the fuck? And that's affected me to this day because yeah. watching some of these videos of back in the 60s and 70s that you see online where you see these little black kids getting you know teased and yeah. talked about and shoved out of neighborhoods because they're black and what that damage that they did to those little black kids it then you look at stuff yeah and then you, you look didn't at those, even know you had well that was not long i mean those kids in the 70s are my age now yeah. so they they experienced that yeah. so now they are these black peoples in the communities teaching their kids what what do you yeah. think they're teaching them right that the white people are fucking mean, right? Yeah. And then white people who were doing that same thing to these black people are now my age, and they have kids. Did they re- did they resolve those issues, right. or are they did still they teaching their it? kids right. did they, to were tell they these aware black people that come they to this neighborhood? That? Yeah. It's brutal. Because the hypocrisy can just go down without being aware. If we're not aware of it, we're going to just keep being hypocrites. We're going to just keep you know, raising our kids with this ideal right. that some something's wrong. Or... Right. Well, Sam, like you were talking about with your grandpa. I mean, that kind of thing happened, right? Mm-hmm. So By when, the way, your grandmother is from Norway. Well, I know she's from Norway, but she was born, I think, in like Midwest. What, what happened? With I thought she grandma? was. Wasn't I thought, she? I think she's born in Norway. She was born in fucking Norway? I think so, yeah. You, Ancestry.com. Yes, sir. You <laughs> always, go, always go to the women in your life to find out the true I answers to what's going on. Hey, I hear you. I don't know anything either. That's why I have no, I don't think she grew up in Norway, but I think she was born there. Wow. Huh. I didn't well, know that. What was it that happened with your, with, with your grandfather? Oh, yeah. My grandpa, I mean, growing up, I didn't hear a lot of it, but I think maybe I didn't pay attention because it was just um, the word was thrown around so much. And like I told Aaron, I just thought it was a word. I mean, I didn't even know like that it was even bad. I honestly didn't Mm -hmm. because it was just talked about and it wasn't talked about, you know, or used in a way to say anything bad about anybody. So I didn't connect it with it being a negative term. Right. So, so thinking back on it, I don't remember him saying, you know, stuff like that, but I just, I might not remember because I wasn't aware. Right. But, um, when my aunt had a baby and she was mixed and, um, he didn't even look at the baby until one day they put her in his lap and that was it. That was it. He came around. And he never said another anything ever. Yeah, and right. he always treated me with respect. You know? yeah. he, I love that guy. Well, see, cool. in a way, but you would never know. He, you know, he maybe he wasn't know. aware. Yeah, 
you know, that whole frog analogy, you're not aware. The world is becoming aware and it's painful right. for a lot of people. They think back and it's triggering things for sure. every color skin. And, and um, because we're all becoming aware, we realize we, you know, we had to mourn it. We had to grieve it. Mm -hmm. And then we have to just like move on differently. Right. Right. But it doesn't make any sense, the whole thing, because everybody is so different. Right. And I mean, even I, I we went to, to school with somebody it. who was albino. Yeah. And she was too. She was black. But right. she yes. was not black. Right. And it was the weirdest thing. But I mean, that's kind of just a point, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, look, there's a black girl and she's stark white, whiter than me, white right. hair, nappy white hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make any sense that we would do that no. to certain people because we're all so different. It it's was wrong. Weird. We didn't make sense. It was wrong. It's and weird. When I, was a, when I was a kid, I had a horrible experience. Um you know, I'm I'm a privileged white guy from Gig Harbor. Okay. There's no doubt about that. I was raised in Gig Harbor. I raised my family here in Gig mm -hmm. Harbor and all that stuff. However, I've never had that kind of concept as far as right. different skin tones. Right. And all that stuff. I, I just never have. Maybe it's because of the people I knew growing up. Like and Gig Ginger. Harbor's pretty right. awesome, you know. I mean, no, everyone's been, was rad, and I'm not saying that it wasn't, you know. But And then up the street, Lord I had blessed. my uh, friends, uh, Richard Armstrong, and they were a mixed family. Okay. Um, so they were, you know, uh, a, a mixed blended family, excuse me. Um, so that was, you know, and they were just friends. And so it never thought of anything, but man, I had them come over to my house one time and my grandma comes to me and pulls me to the side. She says, Hey, do me a favor. Go close my bedroom door since you have that boy here. Oh, shit. Right. And, I, oh. and I, I was like, wow. Wait, what? How did you feel? I was like 12 years old. I was pissed. I was yeah. like, wait, what? Right. I mean, I mean, we say that now as a joke, but I mean, literally, when you when you don't understand something, that's your response. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and at the same time, I'm like, okay, well, I just went and closed her door. But then I told him, I'm like, what the f oh, was I here? Oh, oh, yeah. I it's... was like, why? Why? And he was like, hey, man. And you know, I don't know, uh, Ginger. I don't know if you in, in, in the area still. Richard Armstrong, charred. Um, he yeah, was just, I think so because uh, he was the only other black guy, right? Didn't he have an afro? <laughs> More yes, than likely, was, they, they him, come with black people. Him and his yeah. brother Danny. Danny. It's like an accessory you can buy on the side. <laughs> him and his brother Danny. <laughs> if you buy the action figure of a black guy, big. there will be an Afro that's in that set. Yeah. <laughs> Danny had cerebral palsy and was in a chair. Um, this was his brother, but um, but yeah, that's what he was. I mean, he, and he was always a straight talker, and he was just like, "Hey, man, that's just how some people are, and especially the old ones." And I'm like, "Yeah, oh, okay." It's hardcore stuff. Heart. It's hardcore stuff. But you I, know, to, to lighten this up. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I thought about something like from way back in my past when I was little, the first time I ever realized that um, skin color, what, you know, mattered in any way, shape or form was a uh, little black girl moved into our neighborhood and I lived, you know, deep in, it was Lake of the Woods or whatever. Like woods, so right. it was deep, you know, mm -hmm. and I didn't think nothing of the girl, but when she's at the bus stop um, with us my friends were asking her are you are you black or are you tan right because no and one knew i didn't that's okay yeah and know. i didn't know you know but it was so sad because the girl was like i'm tan yeah and it think thinking back on it it just is so sad and it makes me want to cry because why did she feel like she had to say that and it's just know, so sad yeah i mean i did when until i was five i thought my dad was burnt in the sun I didn't know. I had one of our kids say that. Oh, yeah. That was Eva. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking shit. Yeah. They got yeah. cooked too long. <laughs> That's what I thought my dad said. Oh, dad, Eva, no. I was just born that song? way. Here's your dinner, you little I, fucker. I'm pretty sure my dad was, he didn't, you know, my dad said, no, I'm black. Or, you know, I don't know how my dad said it. So right. It just, I was like, well, okay, dad. I mean, I also thought that his, his goatee was a chin strap for his hair. Right. I thought if you <laughs> shaved that off, his <laughs> hair was going to come off. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You know, so I'm just oh, like, there's a lot that. of things that kids, <laughs> I oh thought God. it was like, yeah, it's a helmet type of a situation. That's so funny. I mean, I also, when the song Oops Upside the Head, I thought that meant you're supposed to go slap your dad upside the head and say right. oops. I was like, say oops upside your head, daddy. He's like, don't do that. <laughs> you know, so, kids are crazy. <sighs> well, funny. Sam, check you're lucky. Yes. Because uh, us, us black, well, because you got black people to make, oh, you're blowing up. Whose Who's phone is that? It's not my phone. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not realize that that's oh, that would be my phone. That would be Chuck. Well, yeah. it, well, of course it was Chuck. I mean, we got dogs. Chuck. We've got, you know, Chuck. Joe the neighbor <laughs> sawing down a fucking tree. <laughs> and now, you know, his cell phone. Chuck, I did not realize that my... High school, I, I think. I did not realize my iPad was it's connected fine. to my it's phone. Real it's in real It's around the real. They both yeah. have mullets. Like I was saying... Aaron though, had... Oh, my gosh. Aaron's Dude, my mullets was banging. But I was just going to say, you guys are really lucky, though. 
You get you had a fucking yeah. Yours was full. Aaron, I your think, mullet, your nappy yeah. mullet. <laughs> Track time, Remember bro. Track. The, the the Jerry Curl grew my shit out, it and then out. after and that, then I didn't know what to do with it. And then I saw Millie Vanilli. Yep. And I was like, I you guess you know it. it's true. Did you oh, rock oh, it, Franklin oh, Pierce? Oh. I only saw your track meets a couple times during high school. Yeah, yeah, I banged you, it. You still, you still. I banged it. I banged the shit out of that thing. <laughs> That's awesome. That was a fucking line <laughs> joke. Lion That's King awesome. was. A, I loved Peninsula. Lion yeah. King was the best thing for me because I could actually, you know, pull my hair out and let it all fall down and just had a big mane going all the way around me. You did have it too. Yeah. You were making that Beauty and the Beast. You, you could have been in a band for sure. Like yeah. Hairdo. Yeah, you could have. I'm thinking 80s, but 90s band. 80s band would work. 80s. Yeah, I, just, 80s I, did, I just couldn't get the hair up, you yeah. know, because I had the mullet. So, you know, I had to You just got to get some of the Aquanet, man. You would have been banging it. Or was that not really? When did it start? When did you start losing it, is what I'm saying? Um, I think my late twenties is when it first started pushing, you know, running away from my face because I'm so pretty. <laughs> yeah, it was you running. That. Shit uh, was running fast. Talking about track. It was actually, actually that was one of the reasons when I cut off all my hair because I had uh, long hair until I was like twenty five mm-hmm. or twenty six. You didn't want to do the and, Michael Bolton. And no, I just you know I caught myself in the in the mirror one day and I realized that it was pulling. I thought you know the weight of my hair was pulling it all out. I was like, wow, that looks funny from behind. <laughs> So I was like, okay. So then so, I so heavy that it was just pulled. I, cho- I chopped my hair off. <laughs> that's that's rationalization. <laughs> that, that's maybe why you can't sleep to this day. Your fucking forehead was getting pulled back. So and what far. are you talking Your about, Mister Sticky? Your hair was sticky as shit. Who me? Yeah, you. I bro, remember I, that I was used that was product, bro. That is product. That's a product. lot of it. I, did, I thought you could use the activator and I'll just put it on natural curls. It didn't do the same thing. No, it didn't. Oh no, no he had gel did. hairspray, like the whole deal. No, it yeah. took me about like, a good half hour to put my shit yep, in there. That's yeah, that's all time. But you had to keep your shit quick. You yeah, know? you do. More time in the mirror than me. Yeah, you come out, it'd be all shaped and stuff, but it'd be all sticky. Yeah, you know? man, because you don't have to touch it. You just gotta yeah, see. it. Yeah, look at it. You know, just look at it. It didn't blow in the wind. You know. You know? It did not do that. Like if Joe Biden came and did that to my hair. Oh, yeah. He would have poked his fucking eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> or he'd be stuck to your head. <laughs> yeah, the evidence. True. There would be evidence. He would be there. stuck to it. I tried to refrain from touching it. Remember the I bags stick. you had to wear, like the curl, curl bags? Everyone had went through that. That was, that was crazy. I love that Ricky stuff. put blue out. Ricky got a perm in the back of his mullet and also put I remember. product in that and broke him out. He mm-hmm. put black product. Yeah, because oh he, uh, he was like Vanilla Ice almost back then. He was like there. Vanilla Ice. Yeah, he he was. was the coolest white boy at Lincoln. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he experienced that type of stuff. You know, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We all have a different story. Well, all I'm trying to say, though, is I think you two over there, Samantha and Chuck, are very lucky to have black friends because it welcome. makes you cool now. So. You're welcome. It makes you cool. Yeah, now it's oh. in. Yeah, no, You're, yeah. Now, see, you I have be black real... kids, so what does that make me? Yeah, the cooler. Super awesome. Really, you really cool. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the most prayed for. Oh, you can't tell they're black. Not though, because so. of your children, because of your man. <laughs> oh, and it's, not yeah. because of what he looks like, but because of who he is. <laughs> yeah, content of character. Thank all you, that, Jack. All that matters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm appreciating. Looks can be deceiving. On correct <laughs> on the correct standards. We always judge on content of character because. <laughs> That's how we can be truly prejudiced here. Well, <laughs> and there's a controversial yeah. statement for the evening. Asterisk. Asterisk. Okay. <laughs> now we're moving on. Oh, no. There'll be more. Don't pull there'll back be a too lot far. more. Okay. So, we, what? The subject we're talking about? There'll be back. more. Well, we're, we're turning we, a corner now. We we're talking about heroes and villains, though. That's right. So we're turning a corner. So in your life, Aaron, am I a hero or a villain? You'd be a hero. You'd be a hero. Really? Yeah, I would. Because you're a selfless guy. Like Ginger was talking about. And I think that's, and another aspect of a hero, I think, is never, you never stop trying. Um, what's a good example? Humble. Okay, uh, Indiana Jones. All right, let's talk about that. Ooh, Sam, I know Indiana you Jones, you yeah, bet. Yeah, go ahead. Well, there's, there's something about that character in The Raiders of the Lost Ark, especially, yeah, that's, that that's defines a different one. type of hero. Right. Okay. We, we know him as a hero. Yeah. What did he really, oh shit, what did he really accomplish in Raiders of the Lost Ark? When you first see him, he goes after the, the idol, right? right? Right. It gets taken from him, okay? Then what happens? He goes after the Ark. It gets taken from him. Yeah. Okay? He tries to stop them. He gets the Ark back. They take it back again. Right. At the ending, he doesn't even have a showdown with the bad guys. He's strapped up onto a pole Just and closes looking. his eyes and survives. Now, and then the end, yay, he got the Ark. But you know what? Then the government takes it from him. Right. He didn't accomplish anything in that movie. Right. But he still considered he a hero a because he never fan. stopped. He never, he never stopped. stopped, right? He never quit trying. It's That's the, the only movie where you could take the hero out and the villain still would have died the same way. Yeah. Because they would have taken the Ark. They would have went did what they did and they all would have melted and blown up and been taken by, you know, the power Boom. of the Ark. He didn't do anything in that movie. But we consider him a hero. 
See how brilliant that is? And he yes. successfully that is super smart. finished the journey, which is kind of our life thing. I mean, not to get existential, right. but honestly, our whole journey, and it doesn't matter the sum of everything we do at the end of it. Right. It's not a math equation. Right. Did we give up? Did we keep going? Did you keep going? You know, right. yeah. what do we do? That's all it is. Oh, it's like Rocky when he, you it. know, he gets his ass whipped. He keeps getting up. Oh man, he that keeps, guy keeps getting, getting up. up and keeps making movies. That, we we getting. connect with that as yeah. people, and that is a true hero. So whether or not it's a superhero or a uh, common man hero or an epic hero or you know, uh, every man, every day guy, it doesn't really matter. It's a hero just gives a, us hope. Correct. Inspiration. 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 Yeah. Draw inspiration yeah. from a hero. That's it. Get, That's it. Helps us to take another step. Yeah. yeah. And and some of the best villains then you see aren't necessarily just because they do evil shit. Right. Some of them have a reason for it, like Thanos, you know, in the Avengers movies. Right. That villain to me was one of the most well written villains I've seen in a long time, especially in a blockbuster movie. Right. I mean, you could actually relate to what he was saying. Relatable. You could relate to him. It made sense. And if it makes sense and you're still doing shit that looks villainous, how do you write anything better than that? Right. That's beautiful, you know, because you, you humanized a, a villain. That's crazy. So do you think that our society right now and the, the 30 or 40 percent of those conservatives out there, are, do they humanize Trump? Yeah, absolutely. They do. They have to. They have to. There's they something to that he there. says that makes sense to them. Maybe and then he's that not goes. Eloquent and they appreciate that. Right. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe, you know, I mean, yeah. But it relates to them. Why? Because of what we were talking about. Because right. of their values, the way they see the world, right. the way they were taught something back in the day. You know, and that's where a lot of us are going, hey, that's not the right way to think, though. Right. Right. So we're clashing with that other group of right. people and they're clashing with us thinking that we're crazy and we're thinking they're crazy. But it's just how we were fucking raised. Yeah. Right. So how can you define. Whether well, someone's right or wrong or someone's a good person, bad person, if we all to. have these different backgrounds. Yeah. We can't. We can't. And no. that's, we got to stop asking the question. We got to stop letting ourselves be polarized by what we just, we right. have to stop being sheep. I mean, yeah. you know, quoting it, air quoting it, but you know what I mean? I hear you. And um, be intentional about what we're doing and saying, have a reason, just keep trying. Right. To journey through, and I have I humanized Trump so that I can not, you know, so I can under try to understand, you know, mm -hmm. means guy. He's trying to do. He's a businessman, you know. He's always been this way. If you look back through everything, you know, and so he's doing the best he can. He's not eloquent, obviously. Right. And he he shouldn't. He's not a great leader for the nation. There's no hope not, there. Yeah, that not I for see. a majority of us. I don't. I don't think he is. But the, um, the well, one. Go ahead. Like, like you said about being an actor. I mean, I think that's what he is. He's a showman, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. as a person absolutely. who sees the good in everybody, I can see his gift of showmanship. Yeah, I do And too. his ability to actually, you know, get a group of people to follow him and believe in him. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for that, I have to give him credit because he's been doing he's it and successful, really good at his it, whole life to a yeah. point where you know. I mean, people, people, well, people there, believe it. There's a reason why he had a successful television exactly. show, right? That's what and I'm a majority saying. of the people on the country love that stuff. Right. Right? He was on TV, but now when you have a leader right. With, that actually can do things on the planet that yeah. make, can make things That's better right, or worse, it's fucking different. This is not a goddamn TV that, show. That's you know? right. He's right. playing it still that there's, way. But he's a businessman yeah. too. Well, he is. So, and, and I he, mean, I, I couldn't be a businessman like that, so I have to respect that as well. Well, he is. Maybe he's not able to extract it, and that's where we're starting to see. Well, he, he can't you know, separate. Separate. That's like well, because because he is his brand. Part. You know, he is his name is his brand. That's what he's been right. selling for the longest time. Whether to it's on his it Trump University or Trump casinos or Trump stakes. I mean, that's the guy. You know, yeah. he sells his fucking that's name. True. So, and he's still trying to do that to this day. So it, it's surprising to see people can't look at that and go, "Yeah, I know he's not a politician, but you know, he's doing things good for the country." I'm like, okay, well, I I see that, but when's the last time you saw the guy play with his fucking kid? Yeah. Well, you know, and think about the story you told me earlier on the car ride here about the guy because uh, everything's going to go back to that now. You know this, right? Yeah. Um, I don't um, like to talk about my job on the podcast, my day-to-day -day job, but I have one, as you all know, and that's why we're trying to get our outside the box of, of you know, dealing with, you know, not being passionate about your work, but going towards your work that is passionate. Right. Um, but there was a, there's a client that I have at my job then he's he's fucking trump he's that guy i mean he is an older white male and he's very uh, very cocky 
I mean, and I mean cocky, not in a stupid fucking cocky like I try to be. I'm talking about like a fucking gross cocky. Where, like no. Trump cocky. Yeah, where you're just like, it's disgusting. You have zero empathy for anybody. You know, it's all about you. It's, you, you call us up because you've got, you know, something great to say about yourself. That kind of thing. Um, dude, dude told me out of the blue. And I, I clash with this guy a lot. But, you know, I've been trying to come around um, to be right. a better person the right. last like six right. months with him. <laughs> right. And I've, I've actually connected with the guy a little bit because That's I've good. just figured out how to just reach him right. and not have him get in me where I'm like exactly. that motherfucker. Whatever. Right. So you guys I don't, don't know how many we times he's come home and push our buttons. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. get it. Anyway, long story short, I'm, uh, I'm on a break and he sees me. And he comes over and he says to me, hey, Aaron, you have kids, right? I think you do. And I'm like, yeah, I do. You know, I got a lot of kids. I got all kinds of kids. Mm-hmm. This kind of kid, that kind of kid, this mm-hmm. mixed kid, that mixed kid. I got mm-hmm. kids. Um, and he goes, yeah, I, you know, I, I, my whole life I've, I've really worked really hard, really hard to provide for them. And, and everything I've done, you know, to, to get the income level up to where I wanted to be was all for them. You know, this guy has a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and he's looking at like the, you know, just looking down and then he looks back and he's like, but they hate me. You know, they hate me, man. Um, they're always bitching at me. They're always telling me I'm not there for them. I've never been there for them. You know, regardless of what their mom tells them who he's divorced with now, you know, it's just, you know, it's, I don't know what to do with that because everything I've worked for is for them. So they don't ever have to do what I had to do. And it, it struck me. It made me look at this guy right. completely fucking Humanized different. Humanized him. It fucking killed Boom. me. Because I'm like, fuck. Yeah. You know, I'm like, so there he goes. You know, after he leaves, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, everything I want, he's got money-wise, financial. But everything I have, he, he doesn't right. at and all. He wants. And, and he wants. Yeah. yeah, he wants it. But he doesn't act like that's important to him, right? But, but that he moment, he just tells me out of the fucking blue, of all the people... You know, he picked me to tell that to. It fucking broke my heart. It really did. It fucked me up because everything this man tried to do his entire life, he thought he was doing the right thing by doing this for his kids. And his kids couldn't see it. Nope. And, and, and they needed something else. And he was too stubborn to, to hear them out. And they were too stubborn to understand where he's right. at now. And that miscommunication has fucked has these people. Festered. Right. The kids, it started with the Sad. kids. See, that's a character. Because then you think it started with the kids when he was four. He just wanted to play ball with his dad. But his dad was out working because he wanted right. that kid to never have to. Right. So, so the how kid can... gets mad at the dad because he's like, you don't spend time with me. And the dad's like, I've been doing everything for you. And they're on two different planes in the same house, not communicating. Right. United States of America. No. Right. <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Sorry. I was just going to say, so if you can have that feeling for Hank all of a sudden after thinking, oops, after thinking that he's so mean and so rude and uh-huh. so ruins your day and you come home and you have to, you know, vent it out and stuff like that, then how come you can't see that possibly there might be something like that in Trump? somewhere deep that you don't know about right maybe there is yeah you know maybe maybe that's the case which always makes me think if if trump hit the mic one day and he just comes to the podium and he's like all right guys look i came in here thinking i could do this shit yeah i can it's hard it's right. hard and i believe that i can but i i've fucked up i made this mistake i've made that mistake i've said some things out of line i've right. done some things out of line but, you know, I really am humbleized now by this position because it's bigger than I thought. Yeah. But I still think I got it in me. Yeah. So maybe give me a chance right. to try to make up wrong what I did. And I'm sorry for offending anybody out there, but I got to get my head around this position. So I'm going to try to do a better job. If he came out and he said that himself. for three fucking minutes on a podium, the news, the media that hates him wouldn't know what to do with that. No. They would fucking be like, what the fuck they is this? But, but I think... Most, How many people could he maybe like, okay, great. You're, connect you're to? You're realizing we all made mistakes. We need yeah. a moment with somebody. One moment right. can change the entire One perspective we have of, on somebody. Of authenticity. Of right. Real uh, vulnerability. Correct. Um, goes, goes back to the racism. Sam's grandpa. Didn't even look at the, the baby, right? Once he touched that baby, one moment, bam, totally different person after that. We could change in a second. Yeah, we can. That's what's so silly. Yeah, we can. So the stubbornness. So stubborn the and we want to be right as and people. When my aunt was with her dad too, um, he would get in physical fights with her about, about him, about who she was with. Fuck. Slammed her leg in the door and just like physical fights. They would knock down, drag out about her being with that guy. He did not like it. And I didn't understand why. But Is it the fear of change? Do we have to control? I, I mean, just those questions. I mean, man, you could sit all day long and 
ponder. Mm-hmm. But but if everybody sat down and really thought about it and took their bl- their fucking blinders off and just dropped it all down can only touch and yourself. really looked at the entire thing instead yeah. of that one way they've always looked at it, right? That it could happen. It could happen. And I don't think there's stupid people out there no. as we think. They act stupid because they got these fucking blinders on. And they're mad on. and they're reacting yeah. and the reactions out of fear. But our struggle's never against yeah. flesh and blood, really. Whatever justifies your narrative, you're going to go with most yeah. of the time. And that's what's so and stupid. Especially when you're backed in a corner yeah. where you feel, and you're feeling threatened because maybe there is some truth to it, but I don't know how to yeah. face it. Because right. you're the person that we're talking about from your work, he didn't know how to connect the dots. Had no idea. And he reached out to you. You found a way to connect with them. You, yeah. There was just something. That means, that tells us a lot that he doesn't have people he can connect with in his daily life. And that's even if another If he's part blurting of it. it all out to a banker who lukewarm really likes the guy. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, oh you're fine. Don't choke. It's me. the rum. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> Hers is clean. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Not mine. Yeah, that's funny. I like my coffee dirty. <laughs> okay. Anywho. So let me, anyway, sorry. let me ask you this question. So one of the things you're talking about, well, you just described what you'd like to see Trump do. Let me ask you this personally here. Okay. Now you can air this or edit it if you want to. Okay. Do you find that same fault in yourself? And that's why you pointed out in him? Because last yes. week you just said the same thing about the fact that, mm-hmm. you know, you would feel like you would be weak. By not reacting. No, 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 being there's a difference in confrontation. You know, I'm, I'm saying if you did something wrong and you go and apologize, that does not make you fucking weak. But if someone does something wrong to you and you act apologetic for it, I think that makes you fucking weak. That's what I'm saying. Like, I believe that those people that act that way and are mean and rude and just out of fucking line need to be need to be stood up to. And whether you do that verbally or physically is up to you as a person. I believe verbal confrontation can happen. And I think that sometimes when you do do that to certain people that are kind of a, have that bullish mentality, they may not do that again to somebody else because they felt uncomfortable at time. You, you stood your ground and they backed away. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then that might make someone who's weaker than I am that doesn't have that fight in them to be confrontational. That bully may not ever say something to somebody like that ever again because of what i did that's true and And i don't know if that i'm not saying i'm a fucking hero (laughs) all i'm saying is like how do you stop someone or at least knock them on the head for a minute and go hey you're being rude how else do you do that by kill them with kindness well Well, no how many other people are gonna hurt if you keep killing them with kindness that could go on for fucking years but my thought here's here's my fear and it only takes a moment to change it could be that moment i see a guy who slaps the crap out of his wife okay And I grab him and I slam him into a car. Right. That night he goes home and kills one of his kids because he's so pissed off about what happened to him. Could be. What did I solve? Could by, be. By going but violence if, with violence. But if, you, but if you also turn your back on it and don't say anything, he could do the same thing. But or if you, you So at least you know you tried. If you show compassion and kindness to somebody, that could change them too. And I've You're right. seen you it happen. To, you do have to You're be right. graceful because evil can't overcome evil. That's so right. you, 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 there is a balance and you do have to be graceful because otherwise, yeah, it, it's hard, but you can speak truth and grace and say, Hey, no, that you're wrong. What but, is wrong? I mean, I'm very into confrontation, honestly, Right. but just how to no. do it where I'm not just overboard. Right. I know. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so just because you're being confrontational doesn't necessarily make it evil. Right. You know what I mean? It's your I intention, like the intention behind your grace. confrontation. If yeah. I'm standing up for something I believe in, like let's say some of the Trumpers do, or if I see somebody getting picked on and I stand up for the, the little guy. Okay. My intention is not to be evil, even though I might fight fire with fire with the villain that I believe is the villain. My goal is to save somebody. Say that is not villainous. But if the that fire is heroic. Fire with fire doesn't work. We have to come up with a new plan. I don't well, think the fire with fire does work. Well, I don't. Uh, so we can't do it anymore. Right like now. I'm just like one thing we can't do though is keep doing that same thing well, that we know exactly. doesn't work. Exactly. Going back to the color thing, that's exactly right. As long as we keep that going, it's going to keep going. Well, they're not anymore. That's why there's riots. That's why you see people changing. That's why if you it see changes. fear. Because what, what these rioters are doing, and whether or not they're for Black Lives Matter or Antifa or whatever the fuck people think they are, they could be fucking stormtroopers for all I care. I have no idea. You know, um, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way you get fucking people's attention. And that's what these people have done. They've made it a national crisis. And anytime something in our history needed to be resolved, it's always been with what? War, right war, I just violence, that from revolution. This point the country was founded forward, on it. Now we are, we have awareness in our hands. We're aware. Most of us are aware. We know there's a problem. We don't know how to fix it. So now we have to get somehow, you know, to start moving forward because I can't stay in my offense. I just right. don't want to stay offended forever. Right. I, I don't want to sit here. I need to move forward so that 
That's how I personally feel. I don't know if anybody else feels similar, but I, I don't know. How do you explain, Aaron, the black guy who got all the KKK members to turn and change their ways? How he, do you explain that? He, he did it in that? a very, yeah, he, he did, did it. In, he, he changed like, what, 200 KKK members, something like that. What's his name? And got, they, That's they a gave him, guy. they gave him like their gear. Yeah. He wanted, oh, wow. he, they're, like their, hear about that. Yeah. Uh, like their Davis, hoods and everything. Ra- he got all of that. I want to say his last name is Davis something. Yeah. That's a hell of a story. Go look it up, guys. No, that's a hero. Okay. That's a hero. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I'll look Absol- it up after. Absol- <laughs> I'm Jesus. so sorry. Oh, I'm that's so you. sorry. Um, no, he, that's absolutely good. That's a great example. So there is ways. Absolutely. And there's ways to do it. Those out and focus on them. And- but the people who either try to be confrontational and, or try to do it with love and kindness, they're few and far between. Everybody else ignores shit. That's my problem. It's like, pick like something. Everybody else. Yeah, yeah, pick and something. If it's going to be the love and kindness aspect of things, absolutely. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with it. Yep, you're right. I think his name's Ray Davis. Oh, okay. I think it is. Good um, job. Look that up, guys. Um, I think Joe Rogan's show had him on there. He has him on there, too. That's a great fucking show. Listen to that. Um, but no, I, we're getting feedback from your phone. Sorry. That's okay. I was going to look it up for you. But... Oh, it's fine. Um, and I don't mind the shock and awe. I don't mind like you know, I would go all the way back to like you talked about in the, like our first podcast, you know, the, the Boston Tea Party, you know, to get the attention, to get everybody to realize what's happening. Right. I don't mind the quick rise and everything else, but a prolonged occupation prolonged is sitting is, in the offense for is, me. Yeah, it's 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 if it's too long, well it loses its and message. And you get distracted. Well, how do we know that it's not being prolonged by another group? That's the we thing don't. that throws it's, Exactly. You know, I, I mean you, know if you got white supremacists out here that can't stand black people in the first fucking place, what a better way to and and be a spy and put yourself in there to start tearing shit up to make the black lives matter movement look like they're fucking all yeah. crazy yeah. you know exactly. why wouldn't they do that that's totally reasonable to think they, that that could probably, happen right they we don't know right. nobody knows for sure no if these knows. are like people just going crazy for no reason because hey there's no law we don't want cops let's be nuts or is there an agenda and is that agenda happening by an, a, an ulterior group. I have no idea. And there Nobody is knows. agenda. You Nobody know knows. There's millions of agendas because everyone's going on their own agenda, right. whatever they think is right in their own eyes. And and we're all being narcissistic with our thinking. I'm just going to speak like globally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we maybe all should be our own miniature heroes mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. be selfless. And it's painful, though, is what I'm saying. Like, this is not easy. I practice it in my marriage. I've been trying to on a, like, today's the day. No. But, right. I mean, you know, you practice where you're like, man, I want to say that one extra thing. Mm-hmm. But if I'm really holding myself accountable, do I need to? And it's that is so hard. I got you. And um, so if That's I can not a bad way there, to go about it. I mean, no, I then I, th- you know, so. But I hear you. <clears throat> That's like the lies thing, Aaron. Remember how I was trying to explain to you how there's good lies, and because Aaron, oh, that made all the Aaron sense hates in the world. lies. Yeah. Aaron hates lies it's and liars. Made all the sense in the world. And though. I just explained, you know, there's lies that are absolutely necessary. Right. To save yeah, we brought that up on the last show. Yeah, a yep. lot of pain, right. or you know, there's lots of reasons why right. lies can be good. Mm-hmm. You're right. I think that's absolutely correct because we're not perfect. You know, we're no, we're all anti heroes. It's not Everyone the dress that makes your butt look we're big. We're all anti heroes. <laughs> right. Exactly. We're all anti heroes. Yeah. Yep. And honestly, too, I, when you're asking a question and you're getting a good lie, you know you're getting that good lie. Like, when, right. is there a, ever a time when my husband's going to say, yeah, yeah, that does make your butt look big. And as a matter of fact, your stomach looks big. That dress doesn't fit. Yeah. You need to put something else on. No, not really. I don't think Sam's been on what's with me for the last 14 years. Wait, what did you just say? You haven't been honest with me for the last 14 years. I think it's all been full of fucking white lies. No, I blow Walk a lot up. of smoke up your ass sometimes. Why are the why are the lies white? Why are you going to make it that way? White lies? Yeah, why are they white lies? Because if they're black lives, they're obviously going to be bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on. You need to be a rocket really? scientist to figure out the way this planet works. Uh, hey, look at all those mixed lies. <laughs> That's it. Those mixed aren't lies. too bad. Mixed lies. I've right. got. A, I'm doing a mixed bag of lies. Swirl, <laughs> swirl cone of lies. Jeez, <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. but again, we all deal with characters. Yeah. I mean, that's how we got so into this, guys. Characters, and, and it's, it's it's important. We deal with them. We see them every day. Yes. We write about them. We yeah. we create our stories, our films, our poetry, whatever you do, um, with that kind of yes. feedback from what's around you. That's so. Right. You know, pay attention to those things when you're sitting down trying to formulate whatever story you have. And intriguing characters make the world around it more interesting. And stay close to home, too. I mean, stay, Absolutely. stay with what you know. I think that's 101, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a, there's something that you want to say, you know, say it. Say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
It doesn't matter what it sounds like. Don't be afraid. No, Start. don't be afraid. No, no. Just do it. Do Vomit. It. Yep. <laughs> so when it came to the idea of doing a don't show do about that. characters, don't one of the that. first people that popped in my head, of course, was Ginger because she has a very what? outlandish characteristic really? to her. Are you talking about me? <laughs> of course. Um, so that's one of the things that, you know, why we were excited about having Ginger on for the first time. She's been, you know, I've known her since middle school. You've known her since you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Did we meet uh, at Goodman? She's, she's, yeah. Oh, okay. She's been a sister to us for a long time. She's a casting director for CCC Entertainment Group. She's an actress. She's awesome. I don't know if you want to talk about oh, what you also do oh. in the day to day, but however, oh. she does, the thing she does, she's good at. And oh. uh, we wanted to have her on here so she can actually talk about herself a little Sweet. bit too. So, oh. gotcha. Ginger, you know I'm going to give you the floor and say, oh, "Hey, gosh. who yeah. are you, and what the hell are you doing today? Yeah, what's your story? Oh my, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Story? Where do I start? Um, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life to just talk about myself and abash late now. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, no, but thanks, guys. It's awesome to be here. I've um, I've been wanting to be here. This is exciting. Um, but you, I'm married, obviously. Ricky, 27 years, just got back from Leavenworth yesterday. Very cool. That was fun. Um, I'm just excited for what we're doing. I mean, I got to tell you, this is what I've always wanted to be since the minute I was born. I cannot remember a time when I did not know that I was an actress, know that I had something to tell other girls like me with freckles. Mm -hmm. Um, I practiced being on the Oprah Winfrey show. I mean, okay, I'm just going to tell you guys things a lot of people don't know. Um, Perfect. You know, because I just didn't, I do, I'm not, this has nothing to do with, by the way, I'm not, this is just my story, that there wasn't a lot of mixed girls with freckles on, on TV. Right. And I just want, I knew I was the trailblazer for that. And I went to different schools. This all probably helped. But the basis of this was my grandmother letting me be that, um, she encouraged me to be me from the beginning of time. I had a tape recorder. I did have my own radio station, had a little microphone that went to the actual tape recorder and I did voices I pretended I was Davy Jones um I remember reading at three I just remember the words coming together on the page in this weird way so I had a lot of memories um and there's there's something planted in me that was planted in me since I was baby mm -hmm. I remember a these these I can't even verbalize, but these crazy dreams. So there's something inside of me. And what I feel like we're doing is drawing it out. Right. I connected with Aaron when we were just children because we had imaginations that were ridiculous. Right. The world we built in our minds, we still remember. And I'm like, Aaron, do you remember the berserk? And he's like, yeah, I remember. I'm like, okay, because I just wanted to know that, that wasn't just like, right. <laughs> did we really and You actually reminded like me of that, by the way. I forgot about it for so long. And when she said, I'm like, holy shit, we played Berserk. Yeah. It's a video game back yeah. in the day, guys, and I don't, but we, we play it. We made up something else, made it into something else that had fabric, and it was 3D. And no matter what, we split off. We had parallel lives. Um, it's just funny, this was always there. So now, um, I mean, I was, I got jaded. I got married at 18. And I was, <laughs> I, I was on my way to Berkeley to backpack, to write the BART. That's what I wanted to do. I just went to Berkeley. I loved the culture down there. Um, and I felt that hippie sort of like mm -hmm. thing about me. I wanted to experience life, character, watch, case studies in human nature out there. I'm highly empathetic. So I, it's like I'm always getting everyone's vibrations. And, it, but, mm -hmm. and I met Ricky. Mm -hmm. And he was like totally not my type but there was something inside of him it was god brought us together we have four kids but i went through the gamut of being jaded and never thought what am i doing with my life i'm doing nothing i was supposed right. to be an actress and what am i i'm only a mom i'm only a wife right little did i know that that's actually what it was all about but now um we're here so i think this whole last 25 6 7 8 9 years of my life was to study characters right is Which you a, have done. Is that a way of not giving away your age? The last 26, 7, 9. A smooth one. Well, she basically did give the way if you can do math. Yeah, yeah. graduated in 90. I've, I've dropped the clues. Be friends with people. She got yeah. married at 18, <laughs> and she's been married 37 years to the math. Oh, 37. Oh, mm -hmm. snap. 27. Oh, wait, 27. I mean, uh, that's what I meant. <laughs> Dang, I look good. That's what I, that's what I meant. <laughs> I'm going to say. I'm almost well. 60. No, I'm joking. Um, no. So, yeah. So, what's your favorite thing to do? Um, Man, I... Dude, think about characters. It's, okay. Is it crazy? I do do a lot of time thinking. Okay. Um, I love to. I love to hike. I love to act. I love. I love to. But I think a lot about the characters. My okay. favorite thing to do is to act. So, uh, acting wise, then, what's the? What do you get? What What's that do for you? In 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 your body and your mind. I know when I come up with a story and I'm writing it, or we're out there shooting it. There's a uh, almost a disconnect I yeah. get from reality. You know, yeah. and I honestly can feel like the world that we're creating is the real world yeah. in that in that moment, right? 
what what is yours when you're you're acting it's it is to it is to it's sort of otherworldly i mean it's to really connect and help someone Mm -hmm. it's to help it's to empathize um one thing you did in the outright i really liked was how you you really not only were attracted to that character, you know, originally you weren't, I wasn't thinking you wanted that no. character at all. You, you connected with that one, but you, you wanted to get to know that yes. person, right? you know, and I'm not going to call her a character. You want to get that, know that person. That's right. And I thought that was a really cool way to go about it. Yeah. It was, um, it was surprising when I was reading, uh, the script, I, I started to ask, why is she so mad? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, what is she so angry about? There's something deeper here. There's no reason why she's a cop. She, she's supposed to do good. Um, why is she literally going off the rails Right. and why can't she see that? And so I was, became fascinated with how a good person can go bad and how wounded someone can be. And then it, it hurt me. And I thought she needs someone to really care enough about her, especially when, um, she, she killed herself in the end. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, spoiler. Spoiler. Um, but she was so broken and devastated because in that moment, right. (laughs) But did she, but in that moment she, she knew everything came crashing down. And I thought, I just thought, how, how is that? You know, we as people, we go through our lives, we, we think that we're doing what's right. No one goes through their lives and says, I'm going to set out to do the worst possible job I can. You know? Unless you're Trump. Unless, Stop <laughs> it. But they, they try to or do... Or me on a Wednesday. What's right, <laughs> I think, most of the time. And, you know, if you're, if you're a cop and you've gotten... And you've, done all that but people get so wounded and their lives change yeah. and they never change back and you can't change back and but you can evolve and so i don't know it just she seemed fascinating well that was that was fun to write her but i did leave that backstory wide open and to me when i wrote that character specifically it was just about rage mm-hmm. i just use that as a generic uh, right. umbrella for mm-hmm. her and but i did not create a backstory and then you did right and that fucking hit me harder than a goddamn hammer. Yeah. When you came in and did that audition, I was blown the fuck away. And it was your performance, yeah, but I heard the story you were right. telling. And I'm like, fuck, that's Maggie. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, you that's, know? that's why she's so messed up. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, holy shit, man. I had no idea I even wrote that shit. That's fucking badass. Yeah. God, I'm a brilliant writer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what makes you stand out from, from you know, the rest of us who weren't professional actors or whatever. But you actually became that character at that time which was crazy yeah, absolutely and that's how that's how above and beyond you went to actually connect to the character mm-hmm. and to actually become that character right. in that moment and that's what makes you really an actress to me absolutely yeah. which yeah. makes me yeah. also have to ask um how is your concussion and after <laughs> pistol whipping yourself are you okay yes i did i I believe, other than the slight ticks. No, I did make full recovery, but it was, you know, it was exhausting going there for her. But I feel good about it. I mean, obviously, I'm emotional when I talk about her. (laughs) You still are. Well, no, I mean, this girl got into it like she was this person. And if you watched it, it was (laughs) the most incredible thing to see happen because she would take a moment before we would start filming and she would get into character and when i say get into character she became maggie she became the different person and it was so insane and she put everything into it like like you wouldn't believe yeah like everything and it takes walking around walking around talking to herself yeah i mean you have to go to a place and you have to go there you have to go there so i mean i before i came through the whole day first of all here's what i did i would do i wouldn't think about it i couldn't go there Mm -hmm. i'd do my day but when i'd give myself like an hour before I would leave and I would have to start going there deep in. Yeah. Um, and I would be talking in the lines, looking in the mirror. Um, and just imagining just yourself as her going down in an elevator, pulling up feelings of darkness, pulling up the hurt feelings of things that you wouldn't wow. want to think about, but you have to go there. Cause that's what she, that's where she stays. Right. You have to take the elevator down. Um, and so pretty soon my whole countenance changes and, and you know, people come, my kids are asking me questions and I'm like, no. And they're like, you know, and we're like, no, like, Jesus I'm like, Christ, what mom's tripping. Need? What do you need? And they're like, oh, are you getting into character? I'm like, yes. You know, I'm pretty soon. They know. So they know. So they know, yeah. On the right over, the music I listen to is different. Um, my thoughts are different because they're they're her thoughts. What is she thinking right now? Mm-hmm. What, what, why is she thinking this way? She's torn. She's so torn. She's descending. She also used to not drink and she started drinking again. She stopped taking her medication. She was almost on a suicide mission. Things that you guys don't even know. These mm-hmm. are the, these are the thoughts. These are the 
the things that you have to think about. Crazy. And I then, didn't know she was drinking. I know. I didn't no know any knew. of that. No, no one knew she was because See? she kept it like that. But this is how a cop can can get her. She, the, Maggie, you mm-hmm. know, she was a cop. She was good. She meant good. Her dad, she wanted to become what, you know, but she already hated cops too. Right. Partially hated herself. Right. She saw her cops killed her dad. And, and it was a mistaken identity. She became a cop to do better, but she secretly hated cops. Yeah. I mean, how could she not? And then she was doing exactly what she never wanted to do. And she saw that. And she was living with that. And then there was no stopping her. And then she was just hurt. And her her and it, it's like, oh gosh, it's, it's all kinds of man. impressive that you, you can sell even that do movie, that. girl. Like, sell the fucking outrider. That's... I mean, <laughs> you know, and I just there was a there's a so much more of a story there to Maggie. Um but that's why she was so much like people are like, why couldn't she just stop? I mean, the outrider was trying to do good, but it's like like, no, man, she couldn't. Yeah. And someone needed to have stopped her. She needed an intervention. Mm-hmm. Someone needed to pull her aside. Um, but everyone didn't want to look at it. And they just, she's crazy. That's one of the things I think I'm going to need to do. I'm going to have to sit down with our editor and maybe put together that. Because uh, we, we only got a partial part of your monologue um, in the car scene. Yeah. And yeah. that went, thing went on for three and a half. Yeah. Five, oh, yeah. Five we minutes. weren't able to. And we had to cut it for time. Yeah. But I think we should put that together for a demo reel for her. I because think so. that's oh, absolutely. A very intense. It's fucking crazy good. Aaron like, had about oh. a heart attack letting it go he I did not want to let it go and i think it was important too but at the same time i think length of the movie was mm-hmm. super important yeah, it was. and you know there's I get just it. certain things well, but yeah and then the aspect like the the one thing that i felt like she did great with that character was that she pinpointed a backstory and a reason why maggie was the way i wrote her mm-hmm. which i didn't even do right? right so giving the audience that benefit of knowing why she acted that way was how I was able to cut it. Yeah, you see what I mean. Yeah. Because without them knowing why, they're going to ask that question. Oh, well, she's just crazy, mm-hmm. you know. Or they can watch it again and end up going, "What's going on with her?" Maybe right. if they ask that same question you asked yeah. when you read it, they'll get more out of it. That's why I, that, I thought it was important. I really yeah. felt like she was making a statement. She was almost like, "This is how we can all get. We can yeah. literally get so tiny. It's always subtle, but we think it's not." Right just get a tiny bit off track on anything and pretty soon that can go detour that's like huge it's off the rails yeah. but, and um, you keep but thinking oh I can pull it back you can pull yeah, it back I can pull it back I'm uh, fine um, but you're really going deeper in and, and you then have no idea d- how deep you are and, when you finally and, try and when you you either have to completely rip the bandaid off or you just keep going right. I mean you're coming to all these different forks in the road and you have to make a decision but I love developing characters and I'm excited for the new film because I really want to sit down with each person and let them connect with that character you mm-hmm. know um and figure out a way to to really connect because if they find that if they can find, find that themselves yes they will you get a whole yeah, yeah a new appreciation I, I for to. it right yeah. yeah and it will really invest you, they will get way more invested way more and to know doing. how to even prepare because maybe someone wants to know how do i prepare my mind i mean there's things to do i mean mm-hmm. someone wants a tactile way of actually starting the process of preparing your mind for being in that realm where we can really pour in to right. our characters right. and, and then you become the character the character's not you but you become the character and that's what's fun and some people maybe they people have different ways so that's mm-hmm. what's great well i don't like acting so i find that i'm very robotic i feel robotic he, you know i get I, told well, do that i do a like good job it, I, wonder. I just i don't like you're such a feeling empathizing person is it mm, i don't know i just she's, don't i don't like having to be she's self-critical and she's also sensitive about what others may think or possibly well, say two, there's that two things to a great actress is both of those two things right and the third is letting all of that go to pour into that because it's like a it's like a character poem i i guess i i struggle with the whole make-believe thing i don't like to have you know i don't i don't like a script that's why i enjoy this mm-hmm. versus I get it. acting i love this this is improv this is be you i don't get to be me and i don't and i'm supposed to be somebody else and read from a script and so blah, 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 blah. And with I just, you, it's just, yeah. a, it's a, going to be a perspective change to thinking about it. That's going to unlock everything that you have because there's something it's, it's like, you're going to be able to right. s- tell a poetic story through your character. Yep. And it's just a mindset change just ever so slightly on how we're going to look at it. And character. that's why she can trick everybody to think 
you know, or to feel like she's such a good actress and yeah. why everybody wants to see have, her more. Well, I play the because, part. For, yeah, well, for there's a reason you can do that because you have you it in get you. Joy out of it is what I'm saying. That's what you don't we're have to about. hate. Getting joy yeah, out of it is the trick. We're yeah. gonna do the trick. I definitely yes. don't get. I mean, that. just imagine how much joy you get from me. So that should help. <laughs> well, I used. To, well, that's rather, why rather, I do it. Wait, before this turns ugly, while you think about Aaron, just remember the next your next your next character you're gonna play is a PG-13 version of yourself. So but why that, did you I'm make holding. me have to be? Because it's faith with based him. Film. Yeah, I needed to. I needed you know, characters who could we could film. I, I anticipated when I started writing this two and a half years ago that we were going to be in the middle of a freaking quarantine, right? And everything else was going to be going on. So if we had to sneak into people's houses to film, and figured if I p- p- put people together who were comfortable together, then we'd be okay. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Right comfortable about. might not be the right but term. The I don't know if I'm is, comfortable with him at all. But there is no. The, the good thing is, is that I, marriage uh, as a marriage expert, there is so much discord in marriages. No, <laughs> so it makes it real. It's that's an anti-hero fun. marriage. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. it yeah. makes it fun. No, just joking. I love it. It's yeah. all. It's all just team building. I love relationships. Sure. Well, Me this too. isn't a marriage, though. It's, it's, it is it's, it's pretty much a marriage. We not, just need to sign the thing and then go and spend the money to say the words. Have the party. Sing it. It'll be fine. No, it is. It's Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing good. you here today to marriage. bring put together. I, I am ordained. If you guys want to, you're not fucking ordained. ordained. We are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Oh no! Are you life. really? Are He's you? not ordained. Are you full of crap? Yes, right now? Jesus Christ! I, Just am not, I am not full of crap. You are. are you, I, seriously? I, I spent, He's ordained. I spent, yes, I spent, He's spent, ordained. No, no, I'm not ordained. However, you could um, be. I sold that. However, thank you. I appreciate that. That's it's called acting. Um However, I really I, I'll throw this out. I will throw this out here and put you both on the spot a little bit. Oh, sure. Do so. Okay. So, actually, this is funny because I just talked to Amber about this earlier in the week. So, when Amber and I got married, we didn't have money. We had a whole bunch of kids. We didn't have a whole lot of anything going on that happened at the same it time. Sounds like our life, yeah. So, we had a friend who let us get married in her house. Right. Mm. Amber and I will offer that same thing to you. You guys oh. can get married here. Oh, that's no joke. Oh, that's Somebody just has to ask know. the question. So, is that I kind of I asked it. It was just putting, a, was that's putting us too much on the spot. I'm going to say, I'm prepared for that. And, Let's just and go and all the way awkward. Well, yeah, I know, wait a minute. Hold, hold on. Is that the bullet point? Let's see. Ginger story, <laughs> acting note. increase of goals. Where the fuck is marriage on this thing? I didn't see it on Surprise. there. Surprise. There's your ring. Well, she called herself a marriage expert. So I was like, you know, she's sitting across from you. Can you uh, give him some tips on <laughs> that? Everybody's I'm saying marriage expert. I meant. Oh, shit. Going up. Yeah, no. I was like, what happened to Sam's mic? Oh, no. We can't hear her anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You know but what? No, You're I'm such not, an asshole. I hate. Hey, okay, Just guys. Playing. I love you all, but I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. I'm not trying to make anything feel weird, but I want to give you guys an option. No, that's a, that's very nice. I idea. think it's a good option. But see, you know what the problem is of why we didn't? I I have never done a, a wedding. I've never done it, and she's never done it, so we're both waiting for the other person to start it. <laughs> I've never been married, though you've been married But I was just twice. like the balls dragging along. I never planned anything. <laughs> I didn't do... I didn't do anything. Like, I just I showed video up. games until the so, second before. Yes, and I, I did. And she doesn't believe me. I'm like, dude, I'm telling I you. I believe you. I just don't want this marriage to be like those two. I get two. it. I, get it. Not. I don't want it to be this. I, I get it. Let's make it a little different. Let's change it up a little. We can do that, though. That's collaborating. Okay. I didn't tell you though. that Brandy went off on me about um, that, too, by the way, because she said, yes, she, the girl is supposed to play on it. And I was like, what? Oh, are Brandy's you kidding oh. me? Oh, yeah. No, here. But I've moved you guys in the right direction. We are all now three. We are all four of us in this room are, are vested in you two. So can we, we can go help, back to Jenny? We can help you. Yes, in a second. Yeah. We, can help, no. we can help you plan. I've already I've already helped come up with Chuck an idea has for a, binder. a location. Okay, just put it this way. Chuck has a binder. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a I, wedding I, binder. I have a called. wedding binder. It's getting to the point where it's ridiculous. I was anymore. joking. Like, and <laughs> our daughter's friend was like, you're not married. Um, You need to be. And she would not <sighs> stop saying it. <laughs> Why y'all got it? Can't you just go down to the coat? Ha- no, we want to have a party, right? Wait, are you being well, judged for not being married? I mean, this kind of goes into the whole by concept little of what children. We're about. Little children right. are judging us for not being married. <laughs> little children judgments. Yeah, There's nothing worse. When than an eleven-year-old is like, "What? Why?" Okay. Hey, I had two um, kids telling me our car looked great the ask other day. Him. <laughs> what are you yeah, asking me see, for? Just kids can be a little. Did I, your car I, look great? 
Yeah, they said my car looked great. They loved that car. They like, your car? car was cool. And I'm like, yeah, it's my car. And they were like, oh, that's so cool. I'm like, thanks, guys. And I drive a fucking 90 fucking five Saturn <laughs> gold. And I'm like, and I was like, I give them you a thumbs up. And then they just, and I just drive away and my happy. brakes are squeaking like. <laughs> and I'm like, so with rattling. a smile on my face. You it felt good that they said that. Cool. I know. Like, gosh, it, thanks, so man. I was like, God, I love kids. And then a part of me thought, are those the kids going to go home right now? And they're like, mom, dad, guess what? I made a black guy feel good today. They'll be like, good for you, son. You know, that's what you I was thinking. You questioned the intentions. Oh, no, I, this I started to. Jaded. I'm like, man, they're trying to get one over on me. And then our daughter's friend comes over and asks him why he's not married to me. And he's like, man, I hate kids. Yeah. yeah. And I, like, like, I love them this morning. Kids. Hey, dad, why are you burnt? I'm like, fuck <laughs> off. You know, <laughs> bastards. That was Eva. Oh, that's Fucking funny. Stupid. All right. Well, wow. how about, whoa, shit. What's an hour and 24 minutes in? That was by fast, Dang. don't I? Yeah. We did it. Especially with four of us. Yeah, that's not bad. We did it. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Do we get anything else to t- talk about here? Did we make any good solid points for those creatives, filmmakers, writers, <sighs> storytellers? Uh, if what you're struggling that? to find a character to come up with, then pay closer attention to your own personal life. I'm okay. sure there's plenty of characters deep, to help. Yeah. And don't right. be afraid to. No. Nope. Right? And then don't be afraid to come up with details. Smaller yes. details. Just what color toenail polish do they wear? I mean, maybe, okay, or what, what's their style? Um, what kind of music do they like to listen to? Yeah. I mean, what do they like to eat? And what's their body shape? And mm-hmm. and where do they live? And who do they live with? And then why? And what do their parents do? And is their parents... Well? And pretty soon you have a character. And it's actually exciting because you're coming up with this and it'll take on a life of its own. Right. And you may not know who you're describing until after they're already there. That's a beautiful thing. And yeah. that's, a, that's a really good point. I did the same thing with uh, Abigail and Sean for Say Goodbye because it wasn't, a, I didn't come up with everything for Abigail until I created the backstory of what happened to their parents when they were younger right. and why they were gone. You don't have to do it in any linear fashion. You can start from the back, middle, beginning. You don't. Yeah, you're right. Um, you can just have an idea. Maybe they do just represent one one emotion maybe right. you just start so simple maybe they're an elemental person like maggie was at the beginning mm-hmm. um but then you have to question what fuels that rage right Not, you know it's beautiful so. i love it wrap it up yeah okay ginger it was very nice having Thank you on you. the show you're our first guest yay i'm yay. excited to be i'm always the trailblazer yes yes great. you've got the girl on and, right. um i where is my normalcy gonna be do I, am Where's I, do my I normal seat going to be? I'm going to need a bigger <laughs> You're studio. You're going to need to get a bigger yeah. L-shaped desk here. We need a studio. Need a studio. Um, I could do, you know, the, the, the weather. Yeah. Yeah, you could. It's going to be cloudy. Let's see how we can. Yeah, and it'll be hopeful. You won't be like, <laughs> yes. it's going to be fucking rainy as shit gonna today. Be, it's going to be a very And you're going to be miserable. Right. That'd be my forecast. Like. I'm going to be like, you know what? What we can do in this overcast weather is get a lot of yard work done. Yeah. We don't have a radio station. Like, we can also so, go, I don't know. But we are still looking like, for sponsors. Oh, yeah. Radio Indeed. Indeed we are. <laughs> yes, and we can do, yeah. If you'd like to have Ginger's voice yes. out there for your Ginger sponsorship, we're my happy to bring her stylings. back in. Yes, yes. Vocal stylings. I do do voices. This is not. Uh, it's okay, like shameless she said, do, do. Mm-hmm. I do voices. I can sing jingles. I'm happy to sit down, and in five minutes we can come up with something to sell your product. So, um, well, I think doing? I think you got a gift at coaching actors, um, yeah. and I okay. think if there's any actors out there listening right now, you should try to uh, reach out to us here. Yeah. And if you yeah, want sure. any kind of coaching help or. Some ideas to yeah. wrap your head around character development better. Ginger's right. really good at it. That's so amazing. I would, I would definitely recommend her because she actually shaped some characters that helped me realize, you know, how how deep this rabbit hole actually can goes. Actually, go. Yeah, it's pretty deep, guys. Yeah. We're just, we're just, what are? What's the surface? You learn. We're yeah, only, we're we bro- learn. We're broaching, but we're we're learning fast. We're it's deep beautiful. sea diving, and we're going down fast. We yeah. we have weights. Uh, right. I'm trying to say that we're doing awesome. But. <laughs> I think we're doing okay. Yeah, we're reaching out. We're getting yeah, out there. Cool. And uh, we just keep learning the process. But yeah, it's great having you on. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. Yes, absolutely. All right. All right. And bye. who wants to close this thing out today? Oh, you. Oh, Samantha Jane. You want to close that? Uh, oh, Sam yeah. volunteered. The music's playing. What the hell? It, there it is. What the, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the H-E double hockey here, sticks? I'll do it I don't, I forget. You can say whatever you want. Just say, hey, guys, thanks. Okay. <laughs> I'll close it out today. As the guest, yeah, I'm going to close go. it out today. I just want to say thanks so much for tuning into this podcast. I hope you found something wonderful out of this long, rambling um, chat here. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. So please um, sign up, subscribe, uh, support us, and we'll see you guys next time on That's Around right. the Real. That's right, Around the Real. And just Around remember the... that Aaron is a lot like Indiana Jones because I keep fucking trying. And he has that great hat. 
Yeah. Andy used to look like Michael Jackson. Yeah. And just hit us the up at CCC Entertainment group.com that would be www www.ccc no one says that anymore Mentor. world wide web yeah. dot co- it's it, i think it's a given now i know but it still sucks i like it, it does. I like it too. anyway thanks guys see ya thanks for tuning in to the show hey if you'd like to be a guest on around the real please reach out to us at our website that's www.cccentertainmentgroup.com There, you can send us a message, and if you're an artist or creative or just want to get on the show and start talking about a bunch of shit like we do, please reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to have you. And uh, if you also need other realms to find us in, in this wonderful Silicon Valley of what we call social media, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find us all there. And we have a page on YouTube that we're just getting started as well. And also, if you do want to watch our feature film, you can find that on Amazon Prime right now. That movie is called The Outrider. It's our first major feature film that we did. We have a bunch more coming, but please watch that one. Let us know what you think. And anyway, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. we got more shorts coming for you, so talk to you soon.